Good afternoon and welcome to our first, first oh, I am so sorry, our fourth virtual tour of the Las Trompas campus. My name is Sandra and I am the Director of Philanthropy here at Las Trompas. We have a very exciting tour this afternoon. Um, I know I say this every month, but so much keeps changing all the time. Um, it's going to be very exciting. We also have some very special guests this afternoon. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Angie, if you could pop up our slide for our housekeeping items. Our tour this afternoon is going to last about 30 minutes and we'll have a few moments at the end for some Q&A. Uh, we would certainly love to hear your thoughts as well as your questions. So if you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a button that says Q&A. If you just click that tab and either type in maybe what your thoughts are as far as what you're seeing on campus or any questions you have, uh, we will cover all of those at the end. Um, we will also, at the very end of our tour this afternoon, have a short survey. If you don't mind taking that, we would really appreciate your feedback on what you're seeing. Our guests this afternoon are our very own Mike and Connie Collier. Uh, you may know them from Diablo Foods. Uh, we know Mike as our president of the Las Trompas Board and him and Connie as our co-chairs of the Capital Campaign Committee. So we are very excited to have them join us this afternoon. Of course, our tour guide this afternoon is our very own Dan Hogue, and he is very excited to show you everything we have going on. So with that, uh, no further ado, Dan, go ahead and take it away. Hey everybody, so excited to have you here for our fourth tour of the campus. Uh, I am so super excited. Uh, so much has happened since the last tour. I mean, this place is really coming along and it's coming along fast. I'm so excited to tell you, but I want to just go over a couple of things with you. Uh, if you look at the slide that's on here now, you're actually getting a, a view of our lobby from the upstairs. If you remember last time, the downstairs was just getting done. And now we actually have some upstairs to show you today. Um, and if we could go to the next slide, you'll see what that lobby looks like when it's done uh, from the first floor. And of course, this is a great place and having a building that is welcoming to everybody and for all of our participants and our guests. It, it, we want Las Trampas to be a welcome center for the entire community. So. Um, I want to give you a real quick tour, if, if we could take the slides away and just give you a quick tour of what's going on. Guess where I'm at? I'm upstairs. I'm upstairs and I'm actually on, look at the floor. This wasn't here last time. They were just putting the trusses in um, between the first and second floor. And now I'm standing on those trusses and I'm in what will be our big, huge, um, staff training room, as well as, as a training room for our participants, where our board of directors will meet. And I'm backing up here real quick so you can actually see, look at these huge windows that look at, at look over into the creek side. This is just absolutely beautiful. And I'm telling you, I'm so super excited. I almost feel like, feel like one of those uh, people on the news that were doing the whole election thing. Look how exciting, look how exciting. And look behind me, I'm now in where our business office would be. And what's behind me is actually where the trail is. So it, this building is turning out to be really, really huge. And you can see down the main hallway of the first floor all the way back. I mean, this is just coming along. And uh, last time they were just putting the trusses in between the first and second floor. Look what we have. We have the trusses in for the actual roof already. These framers and Mueller Nichols are just doing an amazing, amazing job with this site. So I'm super excited. Um, if we could go back to the slideshow real quick, I wanna show you a couple of other things. And here comes the, here comes the slides, here comes the slides. So on this next slide, you can see, this is where we were sort of at last time. They were just starting to put the trusses in. And um, you can see that the first floor walls were done. And now here's with all the trusses in. And you can see over to the creek side. 
And actually that uh, part that juts out is where I'm actually standing right now. So a lot has certainly happened since this time. Um, and um, you're, you can see that we have meeting rooms, hands-on skills rooms, a, a teaching kitchen downstairs that's uh, amazing. And we have a lot of rooms downstairs. And unfortunately, we don't have our stairs in yet. So I can't go downstairs and show you right now. And this is right after our last tour where they started putting in the floor uh, for the second floor. And if we could go to the next slide and sort of see the uh, aerial view, this is amazing. So it starts looking like a bit of an aircraft carrier here. Uh, the flooring is going in between the first and second floor. You can see the entrance canopy and we will have that circle driveway. That circle driveway is going to be amazing. Our staff are so excited about it because they won't have to make the five to seven point turns to get in and out anymore. It's just one nice sweep. And instead of being able to load and unload one bus at a time, we're able to lo uh, load and unload five at a time. And there will also be a canopy over that that protects everybody from the elements, which is really amazing. So safety is uh, of utmost priority here. Um, now, if we can see the next slide. So at this time, and I know I sort of went through that really quickly and uh, certainly during the Q&A session, if there's more that you would like me to show you, I'm certainly happy to do that. But at this time, I actually want to welcome uh, two amazing people. In this month of giving thanks, I am so thankful for both of them. Uh, Connie and Mike Collier, uh, our co-chairs for the Capital Campaign. Mike and Connie, can you join me now? Would love no, no, to can you guys see us? <laughs> can you I see, can see us? you. I can <laughs> see you. Hey, Thank how you. are you? Hey. Who would have doubted this work would work? <laughs> uh, I'm sorry we're not there with you in person because I'd like to stomp around with you, but- uh, yes, That was the way we did our practice session last week. But anyway, we are here and- uh, In our home. Excited to yeah. be a part well, we of this. Yes. Well, we, we did get to practice a little bit on Thursday and I got to finally see you in person. And I haven't gotten to see you in person in so long. And you got to see some of this that was going on. And the, even last Thursday, these trusses weren't in. Yeah. No, no I it was, I, I thought it was amazing last Thursday. This is even more unbelievable. So it's awesome. Well, I wish you could be here with us too, um, but because, this being the month of Thanksgiving and so forth, I, as I said, I am just so thankful to have both of you as part of the Los Trompas team. Yes, and yes, uh, especially, uh, you know, as our co-chairs of the capital campaign, it's a daunting task to raise money, especially for something as big and remarkable as this um, with a pretty nice price tag attached to it. But you guys have been so successful. But I'd also like to sort of start with how did you even get involved? How did you find Las Trompas? Well, that would be a Michael question. <laughs> well, it's not all me, but uh, Connie and I were having lunch <clears throat> across from Diablo Foods in 2015. And it happened that one of the board members of Las Trompas was at a table next to us and Connie knew him from um, the Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> So he was talking about the plans you guys had to build a new campus. And he asked Connie what I did <laughs> for a living. And she basically said, I'm just a retired slouch, ex-architect, actually still an architect. And <clears throat> he said, well, would you like to become involved with Las Trompas and in this project? And I thought, you know, I was a, a little bit bored with my retirement and I, I was hoping to somehow, as I got older, use the, the skills that I had acquired over 40 Talent, years yeah. of, of practicing architecture. So we continued the conversation before I knew it. <laughs> I was on the infrastructure committee, which was in charge of the new project. Um, Second, before I knew it, I was chairman of the infrastructure committee. 
third, I got invited to join the board. And then most recently in uh, uh, 2019, I was elected to be chair of the board. So I'm, I still have my fingers in all of those things. And I'm so actually um, amazed at how good I feel about where I've come with Las Trompas. It's, right. Um, but in being an architect and being involved from the ground up, I mean, that was, it's very exciting yeah. for you. It's extremely exciting. Perfect timing. He needed well, that. Say, he, he can't play not, golf and fish all the time. Well, and you're certainly not bored anymore, right? <laughs> I, typically, I have trouble with my emails and, and um, my messages. I, I can't even keep up with trying to file them. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot of messages going back and forth with this project, with the board governance, with the organization and so forth. Um, so, and, and, and Connie, you got on board because Mike said, I need your help, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've always been kind of a fundraiser and I've, I've worked in m many, many organizations over the years, but never in this, you know, never a $12.9 million, you know, campaign have I been a part of, but um, it doesn't matter how small or how big. Um, I think people, hearts are big, you know, P the, the community has just reached out and it, it, it hasn't been as daunting to raise this much money as it is, you know, a smaller amount of money. It's, it's just been very exciting to be a part of this whole capital campaign, really has. But he talked me well, into it. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a great cause, you know, uh, the people that we serve and uh, Mike it reminded me that we're not talking about differently able people, we're talking about uniquely able people um, that right. we serve and, you know, uh, to have both of you on board and helping us out, I, I forever grateful. Uh, and again, it is the month of Thanksgiving, and I just can't thank you enough. Well, thank you. But to think we've done this in a year and a half. I mean, we've raised so much money in such a short amount of time. It really is remarkable. Well, it, it, Mike, as a retired architect, you know, you've worked on a lot of projects. What's different about this project? Well, I, you know, being in business in the commercial building world, um, and I, I have to admit, we've done work for nonprofits. We've did senior housing projects and, and medical clinics, um, but I've never been so engaged with a team of people as I have been with this project. Um, we, we've been with our architects since 2015, <laughs> which is amazing. And, and they did the first submittal pro bono. Uh -huh. And I can't even begin to thank Tom Chastain enough for the time he's donated and not billed for. So, um, and, and that doesn't include Renee and Chris who've been dedicated to the cause forever. And our contractor uh, relationship has been amazing. They bought in emotionally with our cause and our mission. And we've seen discounts on items. They, they purposely purchased items that subcontractors normally would purchase so we didn't get the markup. We've had subcontractors give us discounts. So um, it's just emotionally satisfying to be a part of the whole team that has engaged with this project. It, it is amazing. And as you can see behind me, we even have a lot of some of our subcontractors doing work right now. And I, I, this entire team has just really been amazing. So Connie, as you reflect upon your role as the co-chair of our capital campaign, which we call the Reach Beyond campaign, um, what has surprised you the most? Oh, just the the community and the outreach, really. I mean, it's it's remarkable. You you send out five letters, and um, you know you get three phone calls back, or two people want to come and you know have coffee with you to you know learn more about the project. Um, people really um, want to see this project. Uh, they're excited about it as well as much as we are. 
you know, so I just think the outreach of everybody um, wanting to build this new facility. And not just individuals, but businesses in the yes. community. I mean, yeah. you've got to remember, yeah. Las Trompas has been here for over 50 years, and it's an integral part. I'm, I'll never forget um, the city manager telling us when we first talked about this project, um, he said, well, why aren't you building it bigger? Yeah. <laughs> Why can't we have more residents? So it's you're not used to that happening. Right. And we've been around for 63 years, actually, before the city was even incorporated. You know, we've right. and I've always said, you know, I think that this is a gem of a community and Las Trompas itself being one of the first to provide services to uniquely uniquely abled individuals. Um, I'm using that term, Mike, to uniquely abled individuals. I, I told you I copyrighted it. <laughs> we're, yeah, we're one of the first ones. You know, we're, we were early on in this. And to be here in Lafayette, we are a gem within a gem. And our community has just been absolutely amazing. You are absolutely right, Connie. So um, speaking of coming up on December 1st is our Global Day of Giving, also known as Giving Tuesday. Um, what would you share with everyone thinking about using that day to make donations to Las Trompas? Should I take that? Yes, I'll give you that one. Well, I, I think one thing is, is the realization that while we've come a huge long way in our fundraising efforts, and, and, and it's not just individuals, it's grants, it's companies, um, we still have a way to go. We still have about a year to go before we finish. And we are committed to continue to raise funds so that in one way, we can reduce the loan that we're approved for and therefore um, the carrying cost of that loan as we move forward. Not that our finances don't look like we can't support that, but I, I just wanna say um, if anyone has been hesitant for whatever reason about donating to Las Trumpas, in the last year or so, um, I encourage you to do so. Um, if not on the global day of giving, certainly before the end of the year. And um, we would be so appreciative because of the fact that um, every, and I wanna say this sincerely, little bit counts. I don't care what it is, but we, we wanna encourage everybody that's given in the past to reconsider yep. and make a pledge, even fill out the pledge form for next year, because it's like money in the bank for us. So um, I would encourage that and and we would be forever grateful. Yeah, and Mike, yep. you brought up you brought up the uh, the loan and so forth. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to get out of this without a loan and be able to spend that money on the on the people that we serve? It would just be yes. really awesome. Connie, yeah. you were going to say something? Oh, I was just going to say right before we started the, the, the program tonight that uh, one of my girlfriends, Karen, you know, what was it, $250? $200. It was $200. It's like every little bit, it just brings tears to your eyes that somebody would write a check for $200. And I was, I just found that out. And I just, I just sent her a, a text right before we started just to thank her. I mean, $200, that's, that's, that's great. And shame on me, it's still on the front seat of my car. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, get it out from there. <laughs> we, we, we have gotten some incredible gifts, some incredible gifts. I'm talking yes. 10,000, 50,000, you know, $5. It's, and, it's all and important. you know, I, I, I am as grateful for $200, for $50 as I am for $50,000. Or, you know, yes, we've even had. One million dollars come in as yep. a gift, and you know, uh, every bit gets us to where we need to go. Yes. Um, so I know that the two of you, Las Trompas, is very dear to your heart. Can you tell us a little bit about why? Mm. Well, when I first stepped foot onto Las Trompas, it and was, I, I put the hook in her. Yeah, but it was I was I was coming in the early mornings. Does the does the does the classes start at nine o'clock? Nine to nine. Yeah, about nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. It was about nine o'clock, and I was arriving for my for a meeting, and I was had never been on the campus before, and I was I was touched by 
the elderly parents bringing their elderly children to the to the program for the day. I mean, an 80-year-old mother getting the wheelchair out of the back of her car, putting her 230-pound son in the wheelchair, his face of joy for you know arriving to Los Trompas for the day. Um, it it really it it moved me, and it was not just that particular. There was there were several people going and coming, and and um, the uh, it just you know the 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 joy on the adults with disabilities faces for having a day that they're excited to see their friends and come, and also to know that their caregivers are getting you know a five hour relief of the day. Um, to get some other things done besides, you know, caring for um, a person with um, disabilities. That that really touched me, uh, really, really did. And since then, being on the campus many other times, I've seen it over and over and over again. Um, but also, um, we have a grandson named Chasey, and he's eight years old, and he has uh, disabilities. He's nonverbal. And I don't know, you know, the other Chaseys that are eight years old and 10 years old. And, you know, where's Chasey going to go when he is finished with the education system at 22? You know, where is he going to go? I don't know. I don't know what his future is, but I'm very proud to be involved in something like this, that I know that there is a place for him to come that's going to be beautiful, that's going to be state of the art, that's going to be so incredible um, that I'm I'm excited and it motivated us even more to get involved. Well, and I'm going to interrupt and try to be brief because I know we're running late, but when Connie first came to the campus, she came home and said, oh my God, it's horrible. Oh, not to mention, yeah, she, Lord. The, 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 <laughs> the building, the I didn't even talk terrible. about that. The buildings were <laughs> terrible. And I'll just add that, um, as a board member for the last, what, four and a half years, um, we sort of had a, a, if I can say this, a come to Jesus meeting in uh, last December where we had to approve the contract for construction with the contractor and it was a big number. Uh, we knew we didn't have all the money then. And the board, like me, was very committed that we looked around the table and said, we have no choice. Either the program shuts down because we can't operate here, or we take a bite out of the big apple. <laughs> yeah, and, there, there's no we, remodeling we make, going on. We make this happen. So um, it was yeah, very we, uplifting and energetic. And we couldn't have, we couldn't have kept operating in those old buildings. I mean, no. you know, it, it, it was a rainy day for Los Trumpets, and I'm not even talking about outdoors. Sometimes it was raining <laughs> indoors, uh, you know. So thank you for everything that you're doing to help build this absolutely wonderful facility. And speaking of thanks, Thanksgiving, what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving season? Um, I know Connie is and has many things to be thankful for, but I, one, am very thankful for our growing and very committed board of directors. They, they've been amazing. Um, our capital campaign committee, which is dedicated and energetic, always there. Um, it's, that's amazing as well. Yep. Our wonderful staff who, through some very, very trying times, I mean, nobody even knows what's going on with COVID and the challenges of all that. And certainly last but not least, not my wife, although I love her, um, Dan, you have been an amazing inspiration. Yes, you have, Don't Dan. Go. <laughs> Don't get there's started. No way. You, you, you there's lead. no way I could survive on this board as board president without the commitment you have made every day of the week, 24 hours a day. And you're our leader. We appreciate it. Thank you. I have my contacts in, so I got to choke that back. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, oh, God. Um, 
Um, and I, I, again, I am just so thankful to you and everybody that you mentioned, our team here on the construction project, our board of directors, the staff, I mean, are just amazing. You were talking about, uh, what is it? Uh, people coming to the program being excited. They come because they're excited to learn something new and to have a new facility where they can learn even more um, is just gonna be amazing. So I'm very thankful all the way around and um, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, uh, I'd like to uh, again, thank you. And we're, uh, we'll have you back to answer some questions when we get to questions and answers. But if we could go back to the slideshow real quick. That was good, Michael. Uh, so this is the, what the building is going to look like. This is what we are working for. Um, and we're, we're almost there, uh, gang. But, you know, in this month of uh, giving thanks, uh, next slide, um, I want to express my sincere gratitude to all of you who've actually helped us to get this far. Um, as a wonderful person who served on our board of directors for many years, um, many years, um, and who is actually responsible for starting our fund development program here at Las Trampas, our fundraising efforts, uh, Jan Erickson. She would always tell people, and of course, with a vodka martini in hand, we ask for people who can't ask for themselves. This is an easy ask. So as you can see, our total cost in the new building is 12.9 million, and we're just under the uh, just over the $800,000 mark at this point to go before we can get there. So this is the final stretch for us. We're almost there. Uh, so in Jan's spirit, we ask that you consider a donation today to help us cross that finish line for those who cannot ask for themselves. So again, I want to let you all know that we're grateful. Uh, at Las Trampas and that we are celebrating this month of Thanksgiving because of people like you. And um, uh, we're just truly grateful for all of your support. So at this time, I wanna hear from you and I want to know, do we have any questions? Sandra, do we have any questions from anybody? And I hope Mike and Connie can join us for that question and answer period. There's Mike and Connie. So Sandra, do we have any questions? Because I can see yeah. that we do have some that have come in the Q&A. Sandra, Sandra, I can't hear Sandra either. Tell Sandra, me I am so sorry. We come back, Sandra, have, come back. <laughs> I do have questions, but I wanna share some comments first that we have. Um, Mike and Connie, the community has said, Thank you for all you do for the community. So I want to share that with you. Um, Dan, you are a hero, um, is one of the comments I have. And then also several people have said it looks amazing. Um, the larger parking lot, the drop-off area, all of those uh, features people feel are certainly going to be very exciting to have. Look um, at all that extra yard area that we have and where our turnabout is going to be. This is amazing. It's going to be great. And, and great. people are commenting absolutely the same. So we have a couple questions that I want to try and squeeze in. I know we're running just a tad late. Um, somebody wanted to know where we were in the 12.9 million. So thanks, uh, Dan, for showing that slide this afternoon. And then somebody has a question about what are some of the new features on campus? So other than the circular drive, um, you know, what are the things that are gonna be really exciting in this new building that we didn't have before? Well, it's, it, we keep talking about the circular drive because the frustration of having to do a five to seven point turn in these very big vans with, um, with um, uh, lift gates in them to help people with wheelchairs. It's a difficult thing. So we keep going back to it, but there are so many wonderful features that are going on in this new building. We have specialized lighting that it gets rid of the flicker rate that bothers people with autism or who have sensory, uh, sensory uh, sensitivities. Um, and we also have acoustics that are actually built into uh, the building where you're gonna have some high, um, some high, uh, what is it? 
noise areas, and then some very low noise areas, which allow people to actually focus on uh, different tasks and so forth. But of course, those high focus, those high noise areas are going to be areas such as our dance and exercise room, you know, where individuals get to uh, maintain their physical fitness. Um, we also have that specialized kitchen, which is all ADA compliance. Yeah, that's uh, we're talk yeah, we're talking about we're talking about uh, ovens that have the fr the French doors on them, so you can move things in and out. This is a place where actually individuals who don't normally get to learn cooking skills are going to get to learn cooking skills because whether you're in a wheelchair or whether you have ambulatory issues, you're going to be able to learn these types of things. And not only that, but you're going to be able to learn it not just for home, but it can be also for work as well. Mm -hmm. um, wonderful skills that uh, people are going to be able to do. Wide open classrooms, as you can see. I mean, look at the size of this room that I'm in. I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. And we also have the training center where we're not just going to be able to train our staff, but we can train staff in the entire region um, on what do, what what's new in the world of intellectual and developmental disabilities. What's new in uh, person-centered thinking, you know, and person-centered planning? Um, we're going to be able to do so much here. I, I, and those are just a few of the features off the top of my head. Oh, plus the our old building, we had wires hanging everywhere, but we're going to have internet. <laughs> we're gonna, no, we had yeah, wires huh? hanging everywhere. Um, but this is all built in. You know, we're going to be able to actually have, a, we're going to be able to continue our Zoom classes the way they are on large screen monitors that are touch screen monitors that uh, individuals can write on, individuals can uh, interact with, even from their chairs. So just so much going on at this campus that's going to be absolutely amazing. And it's really creating a foundation for this organization, not just to do what we're doing now but to look to the future and see what other programs and what other needs are out there and to expand that. So we're super excited. Well said. Excellent. Um, I think we have time for one more question because we are running a little late. And, and I think the important question that several people have asked is, when will the facility be ready, Dan? Uh, Mike might actually know that better, but I, I, I'm guesstimating probably late summer early fall by the time we get licensed and uh licensed and being able to get in would you agree mike yeah i think the licensing components probably the the wild card um i think that with the pro progress we've seen that the contractor should be pretty well finished up in july of next year so Give us a month or two for licensing. We're hope, hoping to have our day program back open in September. October. Yeah, and, and and why wouldn't they license a brand new, beautiful, gorgeous facility that <laughs> it, where everything is done just the right way? And safety is a huge issue, mm -hmm. and we've taken care of all those safety issues. ADA yeah, compliance. It's awesome. This is, yes. this is awesome. Well, I want to say um, thank you to Mike and Connie. I am forever grateful because the two of you have worked tirelessly with the committee um, and have done an amazing job to make what has been a dream for so many participants and families um, a reality. And we are so close. We just feel yep. so close. So yep. I want to say We're almost there. And, and we can't, We're almost there. We can't wait for the the new families to be involved That's and right. enjoy and experience what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And with that, Dan, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Well, uh, to close this out, it is the month of Thanksgiving and you know, yes, we have a lot to be thankful for. We have our teams, we have our staff, but you know, when it comes to this project, we couldn't have done it without your support everybody out there um, in this community. And I couldn't be more thankful to have landed at an organization that is doing such great work and an organization that's in a community that is so supportive, um, yeah. that, really, that really understands who Las Trampas is and understands that 
we're a value to the community, that we're not just another organization, that people with disabilities belong in this community. And I thank all of you sincerely, deeply for all of your support. Um, I'll get all emotional again. So maybe we should cut before I get all weepy <laughs> because I, I need to drive home with these contacts. So. <laughs> Love you, Dan. Oh, love you. Love you. And love you, Sandra. Love yeah. you, Mike, yeah. Connie. And, you know, I, I, I have to say, Mike and Connie, uh, also, just to let you know, I don't just see you as my co-chairs and I don't see you as board. Um, I consider you friends. And thank you so much for everything that you do Absolutely. for us. Thank you. Thank you. You're a friend of ours, for sure. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye. Yeah, thank you. you. Everybody, have a happy Thanksgiving. Uh, happy and safe Thanksgiving.